Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hike to Hoyt Mountain here at Angeles National Forest. We're gonna hike up Hoyt Mountain, which is a little butt kicker, back down and then do a nice four and a half mile or so loop on the telephone trail, which is where I am right now. We're gonna get beautiful, beautiful views into Angeles National Forest from here. Um, now, this is not a popular hike. Uh, you might've guessed that already. Not a big name peak or anything. This is the kind of hike you do when you wanna get away from the crowds, when you wanna experience something a little bit off the beaten path here at Angeles National Forest. It's a great hike for that. And it's also close to some other hikes, so you can combo this with some others if you wanna get some more miles in. And I will put all of that in the guide on hikingguide.com along with the parking info and all the logistical info. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not familiar with the channel, there's a link to that right underneath the video. And if you're watching the video, if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you find it helpful, as always, if you could do me a big favor and click the little thumbs up, I totally appreciate it, it helps me out a ton. So thank you for doing that. And without further ado, let's hit the trail. All right, so we're gonna start at the George's Gap Trailhead, and it's only a short ways up Angeles Crest Highway. And the actual trailhead is just through this little wall here. And there's a little memorial to our historic marker plaque for Angeles Crest Highway. Here's the trailhead sign. And the distance there is Josephine Peak and the pointy one back to the right is Strawberry Peak. I have guides to both those hikes on the website as well. But that trail straight, we're not gonna take that. We're actually gonna come back on that in the loop. Instead, we're gonna make the hard left and do the scramble up to Hoyt Mountain. Now, the good news is that uh, you only have to climb in the beginning. And the bad news is that the climb in the beginning is the toughest climb on the whole hike. And you can kind of get an idea of how steep it is. Um, you know, I hear people refer to it as a scramble. There's not really anything technical about it. It's really just a steep, steep path. You can see we're climbing up. Angel's Crest Highway is down there. You're going to get nice views as we go. But you can kind of get an idea of the steepness from these shots. Now, there's always a path to go up, um, and it does break apart. You can see where some people tried different paths. And I would say always stay to the left and stay on the rockiest path. Um, usually that's the best one. You can see how steep it is there. Um, but the rockiest path is the one that will give you the most footholds and handholds as you go up. And you're going to need them as you go up there. And once you get to the top of this little false summit area, it does mellow out a bit. And there's views down to downtown LA and then up Angel's Crest Highway to uh, Mount Wilson back over there, the San Gabriel Fault Line. But otherwise, we're just going to continue up here and then you're going to get to this little ridge line, this little leveling out area. And that's Hoyt Mountain right in front of us. Off to the right, Condor Peak, um, Fox Peak some of the higher peaks in the western part of Angeles National Forest. But we're just going to go straight on this um, flat part of the ridge and then start climbing this last little part to the summit. And this looks bad here. I just want to give you an idea um, in the shot how steep it is. It's not as steep as the very beginning. So once you finish the very beginning, it's done. And this trail kind of veers off towards the uh, right-hand side. And eventually, you're going to come up to the summit area. And there's not a benchmark or anything. This peak didn't appear on uh, official USGS maps until 1995 as a named peak, but it was always here, obviously. And this is the peak area, these uh, pile of boulders, probably the highest point, but the whole peak area is pretty flat. And you're going to get nice panoramic views of the peaks that we mentioned before. And when you're done here, we're just going to continue across this flat summit area. That's Mount Lukens in front of us, and with the towers on it. And I also have a guide to that on Hiking Guy. When we get to the other side, you're going to see that the trail goes down. And you could look from here, from this vantage point, you'll be able to see down and see where the trail goes as we do the descent. There is one little uphill that we have to do uh, as part of this, but it's nothing like anything that we had before. And the descent isn't as steep as the first part, which is why I like doing it in this direction. You can see here kind of how steep it is to go down, but I always find going down this way is much easier than going down the other way. Where I just pointed there is the saddle where we're going to get off of this steep and uh, rocky trail. There's a neat little vista point here. 
views into uh, Big Tahunga Canyon over there, Fox Peak, Condor Peak. Really, really beautiful. The prominence is great. And there's downtown LA back over that way. And here you can kind of see how steep it is going down. Having trekking poles is going to help. And when you get to the bottom, when you get to the power lines, we're going to make the hard right here. And now all of the really steep, sketchy trail is done. We're going to make the hard right onto the Hoyt Mountain Trail, which is also known as the Telephone Trail. And we're just going to go past the uh, power lines there, the tower, and then we have a proper single track trail, uh, which is like a trail trail. It's maintained. It's easy to follow. It's very nice. And this was actually the old road that SoCal Edison uh, blasted out of the side of the mountain to build the power lines. You can see here we still have some great views as we wind around. Um, and there's also some poles along here, which I'm not sure what the, uh, the deal is. I don't know if there are telephone poles or part of the power lines, but you can see the path is sort of blasted out of the side of the cliff there. But really, really nice trail. Um, underrated. We're going to come around the bend here. We're going to head back towards Josephine Peak and George's Gap. It's sort of like a big loop. Basically Hoyt Mountain's up to the left here. If we climb straight up we would be back on Hoyt Mountain. And here you can see we're sort of in the shade of Josephine Peak over there. There's also the Clear Creek um, Educational Camp which is back there. A camp for kids that's been running since 1925. Really cool. I'll have some information on that in the guide on Hiking Guy. Now when we get to the bottom of the descent, we're going to make this hard right. It's easy to miss, so keep your eyes open. We're going to start the last little climb back up to uh, George's Gap where we started. And at the beginning here, there's a little bit of a climb. There's a switchback or two to help you along the way. But again, it's nothing like the climb that we did in the beginning. Once you have that behind you, uh, you're going to be looking good. And when you finish the climbing in this part, you're going to be up along a narrower part of Clear Creek, which is down there. Really beautiful, really scenic as it cruises along and is a little bit um, flat here for a little while. Now this trail is going to join uh, a trail back to the left called uh, Nature's Canteen Trail. A lot of these little trails are used by the school back there as interpretive trails. But here we're going to have a few signs and we're going to get onto the World of Chaparral Trail back up to Georgia's Gap. And we're going to have, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen long switchbacks to go up. And it's uphill, but again, it's it's pretty gradual. It's pretty easy to do if you're in decent shape as you go up here. And what I like about this is called the world of chaparral, which is, you know, low brush and scrub dwarf trees. But it feels like you're actually in there. You can see the trees are all above your head as you hike through here. It feels like you are actually in the world of chaparral here. When we get towards the top, unfortunately, you're going to start to hear the traffic on the highway. Uh, you can see back up towards Mount Wilson, up the gap over there, and you can see the trail where we came up down there. And in a minute or two from here, we're going to come back up to the uh, parking lot area where we started, and that's the whole loop hike. Here we are. Now, if you stick around for a second, I'll show you what this whole hike looks like on a map so you can kind of get a lay of the land. And uh, yeah, that's the hike. All right, so here's the hike. We're gonna do it in a clockwise fashion, much easier than going this way because of that steep descent I mentioned. And if I loop us around here, here you can kind of see or get an idea of the steepness of the hike up from here to the summit. This is Angeles Crest Highway. And right down here is the George's Gap uh, parking area. And the trailhead, like I mentioned, is right on the top end of the parking lot here. And this is where we're going to come back. But to start, we're going to do this steep climb straight up the mountain, up to the summit. And there you can get an idea. This is the very steepest part. Then we get to that flat part. And then here's the last little bump up to the summit. When we get up to the summit, we're going to do this little ridge down here. This is that little uphill bump. And then we're going to come right down there, do the steep little section, back down to the saddle over here. And then we're going to hop on the telephone trail, which you can see here. And this is where that single track started, past the power line. We're going to wind all around the um, 
the cliffside here and the Hoyt Mountains just up on our right hand side. You can see the summits up there as we go around. And this is that road that was blasted out of the mountain by SoCal Edison. When we come around, here's the Clear Creek Educational Center. If we come around, we do this big long descent all the way down here. And then we have our hard right hand turn and we start the climb again. This is Clear Creek down here. And we go up here on that hard right. And then we have um, that World of Chaparral Trail, which is right here. I mentioned those switchbacks. And we're going to do those all the way back up to George's Gap, where we started there. There you can really see the switchbacks. But anyway, that's the hike. Hope you enjoy it. It's definitely off the beaten path and a fun one. I do recommend trying it out uh, if you haven't already. There's downtown LA, you can see from here to downtown LA, which is also pretty nice. But anyway, uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions. and I will see you guys out on the trails. All right, bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.